Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. We're out in our potato garden again. Guys, we're having to hurry up and get as much dug as we can. We got this tropical system gonna be coming in here. We don't know what it's gonna do. We don't want our potatoes to rot. And we've been digging the Kenebec whites today. Now I've got maybe 10 feet of row dug here and I'm finding two or three rotted ones in here which tells me that they're probably going to rot. But now they're nice potatoes. This will probably be what we use here at Deep South Homestead for our baking potato because they look really nice. Now the plants are completely gone. There's nothing left. They say that's what you need to do in order for, if you want to have them for storage. But in our climate, we're finding that it, a lot of times you end up with them rotting. Now these are, some are small. We're saving those, but then we find some like this. Look at that. Now to us, that's a good baking potato. It looks really nice, and I think they're gonna hold well. But the small ones here will just be good for canning. We notice we get several smaller ones on a plant, but then we'll have a couple of nice ones. We definitely get more off of these than we was uh, the other ones that we were digging here next to us, the German butterballs, these are a lot nicer looking potato. These, based on what we're already digging, will definitely say that we probably would plant them again because of the way that they're doing. Now we don't know about the taste yet. We'll have to do a taste test. But as far as the size of the potato and the way they're holding up, I like what I'm seeing. So we're going to keep digging and we got a 90 foot row here to go and the heat's fixing to hit us so we got to get rolling. If y'all wonder what we do with these weeds, we're pulling them out to the side and we lay them on top of the row because we pile them up and we go down here and feed them to the cows right here. We literally don't waste nothing. Big old spider. Look at him. Right in the middle of fire ants. Look at that. Fire ants everywhere and a big old giant spider right on the potato. Look at that. that spider's eating those ants. Look at that. Don't kill him. <laughs> no, I won't kill him. Definitely not. He's eating them fire and the fire ants aren't messing with him. That's weird. The fire ant we got on him, he eat him as soon as he got on him. Little spider got to live. Yeah, he got to live. Well, that was a good deal there. I can see now these are our baking potatoes. Look at that. Boy, look at that. Those are nice. Let's just see. Look at that. Ooh, look at that. Get this old thing out the way here. See, that's the problem. Fire ants have eaten into it, and it's done rotted right there. I can mash it in, it's all rotten. No good. Look at this bad boy. Nice. Look at that one, rotten. Where ants have got into it, look at it, it's just rotten. That's what we're running into. Another good bacon potato, hopefully. Hopefully. Let's look and see. Yep, another good baking potato. Ah, another good baking potato. Look at that. Ooh, I've got a little scarred up area there where something tried to bite into it, but it's all right. Still firm. Still firm, not rotten. Good potato. All right, we finished digging the Kenebec Whites. Guys, look at this. These things are nice. I mean, these are nice baking potatoes. Uh, what I like about them, the skin is real smooth on them. The eyes are not real deep in them. That means they'll be very easy to clean. They'll be really good for baking. Uh, making french fries, oh my gosh. The smaller ones are going to be great for that. We're going to start, uh, we're just moving some of them over here. 
and look at this. I mean, they're just, now we got some smaller ones, you know, but when I look in that bucket, I'm not seeing a bunch of little tiny potatoes. I'm seeing some really nice baking potatoes. Now we have a couple that's got some green on them. Sun got to them. Probably use those for seed potatoes. But guys, the Kenebec White is definitely going to be one that we replant if the taste is good. Now we've got a taste test coming up we got to do. If we like the taste when we bake them and make fries out of them, this will be one of our go-to potatoes for white because usually we only get like one or two potatoes off of the white plants. Um, but this time, we got several potatoes of the white ones out from under these. Uh, some of them have four, five, six of them underneath it, which is really good for where we're at. So I think that's what we're going to do now is we're going to go do a taste test and we're going to see how we like them when it comes time to, for lunch today. And I think that uh, once we know that, we'll have the full formula for whether or not we're going to plant these again and whether or not it's going to be one of our favorite potatoes here at Deep South Homestead. The Kennebec Whites, we got about a six gallon bucket full. And that was on one row, headed down through there. Danny's doing the other two pieces. These are the crescents, and they're a fingerling potato, two pieces of a row. He's done filled a five-gallon bucket, and he's got a few plants to go. These have turned out to be some big potatoes, haven't they? Yeah, these here. This is the soil for the white potatoes. So we got to remember that. White potatoes love it over here. Good dirt. Good dirt. And behind him, he planted two rows of little, little lima, green limas. Can green, they're called can green, uh, green limas. Because one to wanted lima beans, the little mini limas. There's always like six to seven on a plant, and they're all pretty uniform, seems like. Nice Good size, size potatoes. I mean, this is as far as he went right there, two rows. He's filled a five gallon bucket. It's better than any of the others we've oh, done. Man, I hit that one. Big old potato. It was stuck well off to the side. We're about to go through and get them. This will wind this potato field up. Look at that. Well, that's just beautiful. Beautiful. The Kennebec Whites, we got about a six gallon bucket full. And that was on one row, headed down through there. Danny's doing the other two pieces. These are the crescents. And they're a fingerling potato. Two pieces of a row, he's done filled a five gallon bucket and he's got a few plants to go. These have turned out to be some big potatoes, haven't they? Yeah, these here, this is the soil for the white potatoes. So we gotta remember that. And behind him, he planted two rows of little, little lima, green limas can green, they're called can green, uh, green limas. Because Wanda wanted lima beans, the little mini limas. There's always like six to seven on a plant, and they're all pretty uniform, seems like. Nice Good sized size potatoes. I mean, this is as far as he went right there, two rows. He's filled a five gallon bucket. It's better than any of the others we've oh, done. Man, I hit that one. Big old potato. It stuck way off to the side. This will wind this potato field up. Look at that. Well, that's just beautiful. That's it. Big as Danny's hand. Big old fingerling. <laughs> it's 
huge. Like a handling, not a fingerling. Yeah, not like no fingerling. Not like we're used to. that I um, just drizzled in oil and salt and baked in the um, oven. We have some of our yellow jerky, jerky yellow wax beans. And one green bean or two in it that ended up in there. And we have honey, mustard, pecan coated chicken. Woo. And then we have the Kennebec white potatoes. Now when I was uh, cleaning these potatoes, they turned out really white. The light brown skin on them just seemed to disintegrate, and I just had a light brush. I, that's all I did was like I would brush the dirt off. Yeah. And they turned out really white. You baked them, huh? And I wrapped mine in tin foil, and it's hot. I'm gonna tell you. It is warm. And you warm. see how white these potatoes? Well, they are white. How white, white they look? Oh, I mean they are bright I mean, white. Okay. It took about an hour. I checked them at 40 minutes. We're just going to uh, split them open and... I'm going to put butter Ooh. and salt and stuff in mine in a minute, but I'm going to taste it. I want it. the taste of the potato first. Now, it seems very tender it for a very... baked potato. Ooh. It is hot. It's very, very hot. Yeah. We just hot. took it out. It's smoking. Let's take a bite right out of here and let's just check it out and see. It's almost like eating potato, mashed potatoes once they've been, you know, the potatoes you buy like in potato you reconstitute them. It's almost got that taste. It's very smooth. No yes. starch. No starch very at smooth. all. Okay, no starch. Very smooth. Awesome. And Miss Wanda likes a good baked potato. Um, Y'all gonna see me do it. I'll tell you what. It's just falling apart. This is a really good potato. If it holds up for storage. Storage is our big, biggest deal right now. Man, I don't even have to have nothing on it. Well, one just doctoring hers up just because. I'm gonna doctor it a little bit. Well, it's not real. Uh, it doesn't have a real strong potato taste. No, it doesn't. It's not over. Very mild. It's almost like, like you said, it's almost like eating mashed potatoes that are not mashed. Yeah. With, uh, no starch. Uh, very mild. And it hasn't even cured yet. Yeah, these are fresh these out are of the... These are fresh out of the ground. I mean, less than what? A couple hours? Maybe. A couple hours out of the ground? Mm, about two to a half hours. Yeah. Even the skin, you can eat the skin and all because it's so light. It's it's almost transparent. I love this. Um, I can see this will be a favorite fire. We've decided that we're going to figure out how much of each potato that we decide we want to keep. Yeah. How much we're going to plant, and we've already talked about the Kennebec White. We're going to do two rows. Yeah, I think we'll do two rows of Kennebec Whites next year. Two 90-foot rows. Uh, and we've noticed this too, because we've done some crescents right after. There was a couple of short rows of crescents right beside this. And I believe it has to do with the soil where we planted these at. These whites put on more potatoes. Mm -hmm. The crescents were huge and beautiful. That we, and beautiful. And we, we planted them over here where the soil was more sandy at. They weren't that big. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the crescents. And that was the crescents. Now, the Kennebec Whites, we'll go back down here again. Uh, two good, nice rows. Two, two nice rows instead of just the one. 
Uh, like Wanda said, we've chosen out of the 10 varieties of potatoes we planted this year, we've chosen about four, I think. Five. Five? Is it five varieties? We want to print our red lasotas. Our red lasotas are our original potatoes. The French fingerlings. Yes. Uh, we're going to do the, the white crescents. The white crescents. We like them better than the Russians, actually. We like them better than the Russian whites, yes. Uh, then we want to do the Kennebec white whites and the Yukon and, gold. And the Yukon gold. That's going to be. Well, and the blue. Well, the blue. I like the blue for the color, and we haven't totally finished with everything. I like the flavor. Yeah. And we're going to see how they hold up, but we will do a. We'll, short we'll, we'll do a short leaves. row of the blues. Probably out of the ten varieties we've chosen six. Seven. What is six? Ours and six more. Ours and six more varieties I think will be. But we won't plant a lot of each like we did this year. Yeah. This year we kind of like overdone it. Yeah, the two that we did not like was the... the Red and Orland. And the Butterball. And the German Butterballs. That's the two That's so the far. That's the two that we, we just probably won't do we again. We probably won't do those again. But everything else is a, a winner. Now we haven't done the all blue yet. Yes, but there's, there was two blues. So. There was two blues. We and in all fairness, we haven't done the all blue yet. Yeah. So we will be trying that one next. And I believe that, uh, I believe it's probably going to be close to the Adirondack, but I can't say. I mean, I don't know until I try it. All I know is right now, this. And our potatoes are getting cold. Yeah, I know. Our potatoes are getting cold. Uh, our meals are getting cold. Uh, I know. This uh, <laughs> Kennebec White will be a keeper here for Deep South Homestead. It's a fantastic potato. I would urge anyone to mm -hmm. plant it. Uh, it's just turned out fantastic, guys. And I, and I will probably can some so we know the canning, how they do in a canner. But I'm really thinking um, as soft as these are, they're going to go pretty much to a mashed yeah, potato. Yeah, probably. We'll just can them whole. They won't be cut up. We'll take the little small ones and can yeah. them whole. We won't can the rest of them. And we will see how they hold up. Yeah. You know, fresh. How yeah. long? That was, that's a biggie for us, too. Okay, our next thing is seeing how long and how well the potatoes store for the rest of the year. That will play a big part also in how, uh, whether or not we will continue to grow them and try to keep them. So guys, this is our taste test for the Kennebec White. I hope you've enjoyed that part of it. Um, they're showing us harvesting and tasting it. It is a keeper for Deep South Homestead. All right, guys, I almost forgot. We've got our yep. first... Um... Valorosa. Is this a Bella Rosa? Yep. This is a Bella Rosa. Guys, it's fresh tomato straight from the garden. Our first tomato. Yeah. I'm thinking, oh my goodness. We can't let that go to waste. We had to throw this in the video after we got through here. So, uh, yeah. Wanda's man. trying to hurry. Wanda's trying to hurry here. Our food's getting cold. Yeah. And I have to salt my tomato. And I gotta wash my hands. I'm gonna go ahead and taste mine. What's Bella Rosa taste like? No acid. Are you serious? None whatsoever. Very mild. Very mild to tomato. Mmm. Really good. This is like the old time. It's like the old fashioned tomato, isn't it? When you make a tomato sandwich, this yep. is what we used to eat. That is it right there. Uh, Very good tomato. Tomatoes have been so tangy, so tart. They're tart, for so long. tangy. Sopping, wet, juicy, I mean. Now we've had a time growing Bella Rosas. Last year we yeah. did not get any to work. This year, right. I only have a few. I only planted a few just to see how they would do. And these are from Haas Tools. But. It's worth it. It's worth it to try the Bella Rosas. I'm gonna tell y'all, this is a good tomato. It's a good tomato. It's a good meaty tomato. Mm. Got a good flavor. All right, we're gone for sure this time. Thank oh, you guys. The Deep South Homestead. <laughs>